Let's talk to Tom Bradshaw. He's written a piece in The Telegraph this morning. Uh, he's the president of the National Farmers Union, and he's not happy, as you can imagine, uh, at Rachel Reeves. This morning in The Telegraph, uh, Rachel Reeves is saying we can't afford farmers to die tax-free, which is a kind of extraordinary statement, I think. Tom, very good morning to you. Morning. Thanks very much indeed for uh, for talking to us. Um, your piece is very very um, heartfelt this morning, and obviously very very emotional. I would say for an awful lot of farmers who have been terribly badly affected by this since last Wednesday. Yeah, I mean the, the calls we've been receiving in are, are genuinely heartbreaking. We were told that this change to APR was not going to happen. Nobody has had any time to prepare at all. Hmm. If we were making lots of money from food production, then we would understand it. Farmers want to pay their taxes. We want to run profitable, thriving businesses, producing the food for the country. But the margins are just so thin. The last five years has been full of change and turmoil with new policy post-Brexit, COVID, the Ukraine war. And now this, it really is the final straw for so many. And energy prices going through the roof, presumably, as well, don't, don't really help you. What, in terms of your kind of um, campaigning against this, uh, is going on? Because according to the piece I read in The Telegraph today, there's quite a big backlash against this from some grassroots Labour uh, members and also some backbench MPs as well. Um, and there may well be, it's starting to be called the tractor tax. As soon as you give a name to something, it suddenly takes on a life of its own. Is there likely to be uh, quite a lot of actual um, resistance to this? The, the militancy that I'm hearing about from members and non-members is something I've never experienced in my time in the NFU. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the countryside, the family farms, they are absolutely furious. Now, they are hard-working people that, first of all, were told that they're not workers, and secondly, have had this family farm tax put upon them. And, and they, they really don't know where to go next. They are incredibly worried about what it means for them, what it means for their family, what it means for the older generation. Until Wednesday, the older generation were told, for with very good reason, to make sure they still own the asset at death. That has suddenly changed. There's right. no time for them to plan their way forward. Yeah. And, of course, Rachel Reeves was on um, TV yesterday morning defending this and saying, you know, it's wrong to say that she's attacking smaller farms, she's only going after wealthy landowners, people who are only 7% of the, of the farming community in this country, basically saying they're the wealthiest landlords. From what you're saying, uh, landowners rather, from what you're saying, that's not true. No, I mean, our early analysis shows that the average farm size in England is some 217 acres. The land alone will be worth more than £2 million pounds with right. any, without any house or any buildings. Mm. Um, yeah, so on the average farm in England will be exposed to this new family farm tax. It's something unimaginable. If they were trying to close a loophole, why didn't they come to us and say, this is the issue we've identified. Yeah. We don't like people passing down intergenerational wealth and using land as a tax haven. We'd have said, let's look at how we close the loophole. Yeah. But thousands of farms are suddenly going to be potentially exposed to this tax upon death. And it's the same as the inheritance tax expansion they've also done uh, into pensions as well. I mean, it seems as though they've had this ideological idea that they're going to punish anyone who's got any money at all. They're not going to let them pass it on to their children or their spouse unless they've got a 40% take on it. Um, it just seems extraordinary to me that they've done it without, it would appear, doing very much research into it. When the Chancellor stood up and opened the budget saying invest, 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 I was absolutely delighted to deliver for food security. We need our members, our farmers investing in their future. Mm. That's what will deliver for food security. But today they're looking at it saying, why should I increase the value of my farm? Mm. What is the point? If I invest, I'm going to pay more tax. It simply does not work. We want to have a grown up conversation with this government. The line in their manifesto, food security, is national security. We want to deliver that with them. Mm. There's nothing more important to the British people than being guaranteed of a safe, a safe supply of affordable British food. And this really threatens that. And so are you ho hopeful that you might be able to get some wiggle room on this? Are you hopeful that you might be able to move the, the numbers or the move the dial in some way? Look, the passion that's been shown from the farming industry, but also the much wider industry. We launched a petition at five o'clock on uh, Friday afternoon. By Within within 48 hours, we'd had over 100,000 people sign that petition. Today, it's over 120,000. If needs be, we'll keep pushing it. We'll show the public support this. They want British food. They know that farming has been on a knife edge for too long, and we cannot take any more nails in the coffin. OK, good to talk to you. Tom Bradshaw, thank you very much indeed, President of the National Farmers Union.